Hey everybody, it's Professor Malat. This is the week 14 overview. Hopefully I will get through this fairly quickly, even though there seems like there's a lot of material that has to be covered. So we're talking a little bit more this week about argumentative writing. Um, so when you're answering the question, does technology make us happier that should read happier, you're choosing a side, yes or no. And this is essentially what we do when we have each argument. We are using sound reasoning and evidence that helps us to support our position by providing reasons why. Um, so you'll also be learning how to cite your sources properly in your writing so you're not plagiarizing. So we'll be talking about things like in-text citation, attribution of sources, um, quoting, paraphrasing, summaries, and things like the MLA Works Cited page. So it's a lot of information to take in all at once. I suggest that you break it up over the course of the week so that you're not overwhelmed by all the things that you might need to know in order to complete uh, the rough draft that you'll be working on this week. Um, so for the readings, the grammar, we're working on parallelism. There's a couple of readings on parallelism to help you prepare for the grammar quiz that you have. There is a reading in the writer's practice about using sources, but there is also a module from the University of Mississippi RET Lab. Um, again, these are all just resources that you can go to if you need refreshing or if you're unfamiliar with the material of how to use sources in your writing. There's a PDF handout on how to write a research argument. This one might not be so helpful. We also have a Canvas page on argumentative writing. I had to go back and edit that page because it led to the wrong place. Uh, it led to a previous course <laughs> that no longer has the page. Um, so we have an argumentative writing page. This is essentially just my notes from the crash course videos that I suggest that you watch this week. Um, so, you know, again, if you have time to do it, fantastic. If not, it's not a huge deal. It doesn't essentially contribute to an assignment that you need to complete this week, um, but it can be helpful. Another page about drafting tips. So uh, about taking notes on your sources and doing what I like to call curating your quotations. Um, so this talks a bit about some tips that can help you while you are doing your research and taking notes, making sure that you include the author's name and the title of the article each time you are taking notes on a source that will help you to keep track of the information that you are reading or um, watching. And then when you're selecting quotes, you want to keep certain things in mind, especially the rule less is more. A lot of students use very lengthy quotes or many, many quotes to try to prove to the instructor that they know how to play what I like to call the quoting game. Um, however, that is really not what research is all about. We use quotes, we use sources from other people to help support our own ideas. So it's really important that you understand that distinction. It's not so much that I wanna see how many sources you can use, but rather how you can use a source to help support your own original ideas. Um, and, and that's something that just takes a little bit of getting used to. So this is your first time through doing it. I don't expect you to get it perfect, but at least give it a try. So you wanna make sure that your quotation, when you're choosing a quotation, um, you use them in these four different writing situations. You use the quotation when it preserves the clarity or accuracy of the information. You use a direct quotation when it captures a phrase that the author coins, something that the author came up with, right? Um, you use a direct quotation when you want to discuss the language of that quotation itself in your own paper. So say you are reading something from Sherry Turkle and you want to pick apart the quotation that she uses um, regarding the young girl talking to her father where she gets her title, Stop Googling, Let's Talk, right? Um, and you want to pick apart the language of that. You want to analyze what that quote is saying. Then you would want to use that direct quotation. The last case is when the quotation uses especially memorable language 
that expresses the author's style. So if you cannot paraphrase it, if you cannot say it better, or as well as the author said it, then you should use that direct quotation and maintain the integrity of that quote by using it word for word. Um, and these are things that I talk about in some of my lectures that I have linked for you this week. Um, it's really annoying that when I go into a page, it doesn't go back right to <laughs> the module where I was. Uh, so I'll, I apologize for all the scrolling that I'm doing in this video. I also have a couple of other resources for you. One is an MLA in-text citations cheat sheet. This is a PDF. I apologize that the accessibility score is a bit low. I grabbed this from the internet and I just kind of made it into a PDF. I will try to rework that so that for future classes, it's more accessible. Um, there is a Scribber page that also talks about in-text citations. And then I have a Canvas page that talks a bit about the work cited. I'm gonna open this up for you. Um, and there, these are some of the resources that we probably talked about earlier in the semester. One is the Purdue OWL Works Cited page. The other is a website called Citation Machine. And I have a whole video on how to use a citation generator. That's this video here, as well as videos on MLA citation and two videos on how to do formatting in Microsoft Word as well as Google Docs. So those are good resources for you if you have any questions about how to do something in um, these various pieces of software that help you in uh, your research writing. But let me just open up Citation Machine for you real quick so you see what it's all about. We will primarily, and it already opens up to MLA, so that's a handy thing. This link goes directly to MLA, so when you put in your sources, you know that you will be getting an MLA formatted citation. Um, we will primarily be working with websites. So you just click on website. And again, the instructional video tells you more about it. You put in the URL, the link, and you click on search, and then you can go through. Um, again, I, I address this more in the separate video. I don't want to go through it and repeat the same thing that I did in the separate video. Um, so Citation Machine is pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy to use. The only thing that you have to be on the lookout for, as I said before, you want to make sure that you're using MLA 9 as the format for your citations. Um, and you also may need to go in. Sometimes electronic sources aren't formatted properly, you might have to go in and do some editing and that kind of thing. Um, and again, I talk more about that in the using a citation generator um, video. And then there are some things, just reminders of what you need to do on the Works Cited page. It begins on a new page. It's formatted with the same font, spacing, and margins as the rest of your essay. Um, your Works Cited page starts with a title that's centered at the top of the page, Works Cited. The entries are listed alphabetically, uh, either by author's last name or by the title of the article or website, web page. The entries yeah, are alphabetical order and um, format each entry with a hanging indent, misspelled. Um, if you do not know what a hanging indent is, you can watch either of these videos, and I do address it in one of those, um, or both of those, actually. Some additional resources here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there is a PDF called Documenting Sources in MLA Style 2021. That's a good document to download to your computers should you have to write another MLA style paper if you're in English 1001 or any other class that requires you to use MLA for, uh, and have work cited. Um, that's a good resources, resource to have and download to your computer. So I recommend you download that. And then we also have the link to Citation Machine. Again, that goes to the MLA uh, section of the page. This week, we have this video to watch. Uh, I actually have the video linked from 
fall, I think. Uh, so all of the days and dates and months are incorrect. It is also says week 13. We're in week 14. Uh, we're just doing the same information that we were doing in week 13 in the fall. Um, so I'm going to change this link. The length will hopefully change as well. Um, we have essay number three, research argument assignment explanation. So make sure that you watch this video. It explains a bit more about the research argument assignment. This assignment, uh, this video is also embedded in the assignment page. So if you miss it here, you'll watch it here once you go to the assignments. Um, and then I have, again, three helpful videos. The attribution of sources talks of all about in-text citations, how to use quotes, how to paraphrase, so on and so forth. So I highly recommend that you watch that. Um, if you are at all uncertain about how to use quotes and paraphrases and that kind of stuff within your own writing. Um, using a citation generator, again, that's the same one as uh, what I showed you <laughs> on the More About Works Cited page. So we have it here as well. And I just try to get it to you from all angles, as well as the MLA citation tips. There are two videos that are embedded in that argumentative writing Canvas page. I have them linked down here. If you don't feel like reading my notes, you can come down here and watch those videos. They're not required, but if you're curious to learn a bit more about argument, they are helpful and interesting. Um, and again, those are quick videos, usually about nine or 10 minutes long. Ooh, I'm really hot right now. <laughs> nine or 10 minutes long. And um, then, you know, you're done, right? So we have the grammar quiz, parallelism this week. We have your research essay rough draft, journal number seven, which is just the silly little gifs and memes about your draft. Um, I realize that all of these extra assignments are probably kind of annoying because they're not really very substantial, but they are extra points. Not that we're dealing with points here. Um, so I'm just rethinking how I do my classes and the amount of work that you have to do. Um, so don't sweat it. If you don't get to this, it's not going to affect you very negatively. And the last thing I want to talk about is the online course evaluation. Um, you probably have gotten an email from the university telling you about course evaluations. If you have not, I am now telling you we ask students to complete a course evaluation. That's separate from your course reflection that you do for me. This is for the university. Um, it helps them to see how well I'm doing my job, how, how well I am you know, presenting materials, that kind of thing. So the, and it only takes about five or 10 minutes to get through. It's not very long. Um, so when I click on this, it's gonna show you my view what I see. Um, it won't show me what questions you have, but I'll open it up just so you can see that for our class, and this is our class here, English 099, uh, so far nobody has responded. Um, this has been up as a link for at least a week. I think it's been active for the past week. Uh, it closes in 12 days, so it's available until the 19th, I believe. That's 12 days. Yeah, um, it's available until the 19th. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at the survey. I'm not sure if it lets me see the questions. Yeah, I don't think it does. Um, yeah. So make sure that you log in to the evaluation website, find your English 099 course and fill out the questionnaire. It's completely anonymous, which means I don't see, you know, you can make whatever comments you want to, be as honest as you want to, be as brutal as you want to. That is how I can improve the course. That is how I can improve my teaching approach. Um, so I value your feedback. Hopefully you're not going to be too harsh, but if you are, then it's probably because I deserve it, right? So the online course of evaluation helps me 
to improve my teaching approach. It helps me to refine the types of assignments that I am providing for students. So I know that some students find the grammar quizzes really helpful because they need some kind of refreshing for grammar. Others have found it to be just kind of dumb. You know, they're really easy, so what's the point? Um, likewise, with the journals, I'm considering dumping those for future classes, but I know that some students have found some of the journal topics to be really interesting to write about. So those sorts of things, you'll have an opportunity to jot in some of your comments, but mostly, mostly it's uh, evaluating different aspects of the course from a one to a five. So, you know, one being the worst and five being the best. So you go in through a series of questions, you answer them um, and then submit it. It's done. Um, I don't really get a lot of students who do them, but it's helpful for me to see the, the commentary and the feedback because then I can adapt future classes. Um, so yeah, please do it. Do that for me. Do, excuse me. Do that for all of your classes. I'm asking you to complete it by the 14th, but as long as you get it done by the end of the classes on the 19th, uh, you'll be golden. I don't see any kind of feedback until well after all of your final grades are submitted and posted and you've received them. I don't receive any feedback from it until the beginning of the summer semester. So um, again, it's anonymous. It's doesn't take very much time to do. So I really do ask that you provide your evaluation. It does help me. And it's different than the course reflection that I ask you to write for me at the end of the semester during finals week. Oh, OK, so I think that is everything. I know it's a lot of information and a lot of work. Um, but I think all of you, you're all pretty mature about things. And I know so many of you are working very hard, not only in this class, but through things in your lives with your families and jobs and um, trying to find that balance of, of, you know, working and committing to your studies as well as your work and life balance. So, um, Hang in there, we are almost done. You've done fantastic work so far. Keep up the strong, strong pace and it's gonna pay off. I swear to you, it, it is going to pay off. You'll be so proud of yourselves once you have done it all and you've submitted all the work and hopefully over the summer you can take a break if you're not taking any classes. Um, if you have any questions for me, please feel free to reach out to me. That's why I'm here. Um, I mean, I am pretty busy because I have two other classes and they're English 1001 classes and I've made everybody's rough draft do in the same week uh, because I'm a glutton for punishment, I guess. But um, so I'll be busy with grading things and providing feedback because I like to provide feedback through the rough draft uh, process. Um, but if you have any questions, if you're confused by anything, please don't just let it slide reach out to me, ask me if you need to, we can do a virtual appointment, anything like that. I'm happy to help you when I can. It's also a busy season in my life, baseball, weather, things are getting rescheduled. There's an eclipse tomorrow, so things are kind of crazy. <laughs> but I do prioritize my students. So um, if you need help and you need to meet with me or you have questions, feel free to reach out, okay? Take care, everybody. Have a fantastic week. Hang in there. You're almost done. All right. Bye-bye.